The final of our prepared questions from Tony Lodge, please. The coalition agreement states that the Lib Dem Energy Secretary can remain opposed to or lukewarm on nuclear power. Britain's energy crisis will deepen if we can't fast-track new nuclear plant. Does the panel agree we should be heavily subsidising more intermittent wind energy and only half-heartedly backing new nuclear? When it comes to the issue of energy security, um, again, it is, we have had more energy white papers by this government than you could possibly imagine over the last 13 years, and nothing's happened. And I've worked quite extensively in the Caucasus, Central Asia. I came out of my hotel in Tbilisi, and as far as Jill is, there was a man in a car, and somebody went up and just blew them away. And that was a very nice gentleman um, with relationships with Gazprom. Um, we are in a very volatile world when it comes to energy, and what happens in Azerbaijan, what happens in Kazakhstan, will affect the lights in Darlington. And we are getting closer and closer to that level of dependency. So the whole issue of energy security is crucial. And in my view, the whole issue of our renewing our nuclear capacity is absolutely essential. I mean, I have, you know, and in many ways, what is the tragedy of the last four, 30, 40 years is, is the word nuclear, because when one started, it started to be, it used to be called atomic energy. And by merging the two things, nuclear bombs and nuclear energy, in, in many ways, on, on one level, it's been a branding problem. And then there's been a huge, obviously, that has allowed people to create huge issues of um, public anxiety. I think the anxiety is diminishing quite a lot. <coughs> um, I think that when you start to look at some of the waste issues, we get people on the moon. Is it not possible that we can actually invest in some serious research to ensure that we can actually deal with that waste? It cannot be, be beyond the wit of man. And it is the only way that we are going to secure long-term British United Kingdom energy security, which is going to become a more diminishing asset. It will become a more expensive asset. And we'll have to find it from much more volatile parts of the, country, of the world. So I see it as the only option, and I'm very, very pro um, renewing our nuclear, nuclear capacity. The reality is that politics is about principles and practicalities. And in government, you've got to deal with the practicalities. And I think the question is, what is the alternative to nuclear? Because you know, it's fine to talk about all the great opportunities that, will t that other energy forms might offer, and they might well offer that. And I do think we've got to try to consume less energy and you know there's a whole way of doing that in terms of the way you build houses and you know teaching people to be conscious of that recycling all these things are brilliant the reality is if we don't quickly adopt nuclear and fast track them through the planning process we won't have the capacity we need that's the reality so you know chris will have to keep quiet and we will have to get on with this <coughs> real tr real decision that you know the country needs if we're not going to have the lights going out that's just the reality of government Right. Well, I was just musing on the position of, of uh, Chris Hune uh, as Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change. That's something that I do quite a lot as well. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> How on earth did he get into that job? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that this is probably the, the kind of the, the big sort of challenge to the coalition. Um, not the things we've been talking about earlier, but, but this really, because it is hard to square how uh, the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change can be so opposed to nuclear energy when the consensus, I think, in most of the Conservative Party is that it's absolutely an essential uh, part of the armamentarium going forward uh, for us to be energy secure and for us to avoid a crisis uh, in, in years to come. I agree with both my colleagues um, on the necessity for nuclear. Um, your other question about uh, wind power, I mean, I am also in favour of the, the mixed, econ mixed energy, energy economy, and I think renewables have a crucial role to play. They're going to be able to deliver power far more quickly than a reinvestment in nuclear technology, for one thing. Um, but I'm very sceptical about the value of wind power um, from what I've seen of the economics. I mean, it's been heavily subsidised. Um, it annoys me that so little of it is actually British manufactured as well. Yes, it's yeah. all foreign investment, um, and uh, they are not 
just favoured over nuclear, they're also favoured over other forms of renewable energy. Uh, there's a terrific opportunity in this country for marine energy, for wave power and tidal power. Um, and there are um, pilots going on at various point, uh, points of our coastland. And, uh, and it, it's very promising. Um, potentially, it could deliver a far more consistent um, output than wind farms can uh, because the tides keep rolling and the wind doesn't keep blowing. It's as simple as that. But they are on uh, a, a, a poor footing compared to the wind companies in terms of the tax advantages they have. And that's an opportunity. Uh, it's an it's a, a industry which is, um, you know, fa fairly young, and it's an opportunity for British manufacturing and industry to get in and own some of the action here. And I, I, I would uh, hope that this department will focus on you know, getting a more level playing field, not just between, you know, wind and nuclear, but also across all the renewable sector. Nadim, have you been contemplating Chris Hewn as well? Uh, no. Um, I read chemical engineering at university, and um, I still am. I was a Thatcherite. I still am a massive admirer of Margaret Thatcher. The one thing that always disappointed me was uh, her government not actually being brave enough to take on the CND and the, the sort of the whole environmental lobby, like the French did, and say, you know what, we are going to invest in nuclear. Where the f French were actually smart on this, by the way, mm. is they had one type of nuclear plant um, that they focused investment on, rather than what we did here, which is essentially have you know a variety, and we sort of toyed with it, messed around <laughs> a little bit here and there, and ended up actually losing out. Um, I can tell you because I've visited Sizewell, it is incredibly safe uh, yeah. nuclear. I know, what, which is what Laura was referring to, there is a branding issue, but actually the reality is I am hugely sceptical about onshore wind. It really is something that, that politicians, I think, you know, which is always a danger uh, when, they, when, they, when they sort of reach out for the, for the, uh, the, the, the sort of the, the great easy solution that... Uh, Businessmen and engineers come in and, and, and sell to them. Um, uh, get get you know hoodwinked slightly. Offshore wind still interesting. What Margot was referring to about um, uh, wave energy, yes, but it's expensive, massively expensive, especially some of the the, the stuff that, that that they're experimenting with at the moment. I don't think there is a choice. We've got to go for nuclear. I think we've actually missed out. Now the French have got you know one of the world's biggest. Uh, companies doing this, building it for the Chinese and elsewhere around the world, is a great shame. We could have been world leaders yeah. in nuclear energy, and we're not. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of depressing the, the way that the you know the, 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 the French are a really must do <coughs> international. We want more nuclear. We go get the French and ask them yeah. to come here and build it for us. Yeah. We? I mean, well, we stepped back. I mean, it was it really because we didn't political expediency. Mm -hmm. whatever, we stepped away from you know that that challenge. Right. And, Charlie, something tells me you're not going to be a great opponent of nuclear energy. Well, uh, <coughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I think there are some important questions. Um, and I think we need to have actually a national debate and say to people, are you concerned uh, about emissions? Are you concerned about energy security? Are you concerned about fuel bills going up and down like a cartwheel? Um, about the level of pollution from cars? Uh, and it's massive pollution. You just go outside in London um, and you're sort of rubbing your eyes in seconds. And if either, any of those questions is yes, it seems to be the answer is, is quite uh, straightforward as to what we should actually try and do. We should try and build lots of nuclear power stations, have effectively nuclear power in this country, and have fuel cell card. And if we actually reformed our, our cars as well as our nuclear power, uh, we would frankly have a much nicer country, much more stable um, bills, and much less dependency on other nations. But I think it might be a bit radical for most governments to actually try and do. Thank you all very much, and thank you, Fraser, for chairing this. It made such a great evening. And thank you for, for participating. Can I just say, those of you who aren't already associate members of the Centre Policy Studies or supporters, please do take the form and join up, because we have lots of these kind of events. Uh, we really you know, don't want to have the kind of bland stuff at the CPS. Um, and interesting questions and, and, and the kind of thing that Fraser has been doing tonight. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 That's really good. That's really good.